competition. Oh, missed. Missed again. Oops. Right, that's it. You're getting <laughs> dangerous. It's time we called in the water bomb experts. Okay, the big water bomb competition is on this afternoon. And I want our team in top shape. Good. Keep up the target practice. The fence. The tree. Great. Nothing wrong with their aim, but I bet their catching skills need brushing up. Come on, throw to me. Don't worry. Run as hard as you can. Remember, if we can catch them, we won't get splattered. Yeah, that's what I want you to do. Come on, guys. It's easy. Now, catch this one. Hopeless. They can't catch a thing. Time to let the master show you how it's done. Jade and I are making super cool birthday cards for our friend Michael. Whoa! Clumsy! Now look what you've done! The ink is all running! It was the best one too! It's running, but it's coming out green! Jade is black made from green and some other colour. Well, she's no help. I guess I'll have to figure this one out. Jade, try not to ruin anything else while I'm gone. We're about to find out the truth about black. This is a coffee filter. It's really absorbent. I'll put some water in a glass. And draw on the coffee filter with a black felt tip pen. Like this. Now, let's see what happens when we let the paper soak up some water. The water is soaking right through the black and taking the ink with it. But look at the colours left in the ink. There's green and blue and turquoise. I never knew black had so many other colours in it. Do you think it would work if we drip the water on? On it goes. Yeah, look. It's doing the same thing again. The black ink in the felt pen is made up of different coloured pigments. The water carries the pigments along the absorbent paper at different rates. That way we can see them separate into some of the colours that combine to make up black. Scientists call this process chromatography, where separating colours reveals what's inside certain compounds. In this case, black ink. We made all those colours appear. It's as if Jade and I have performed black magic. Michael's going to think his birthday card is magic for sure. All those colours, fantastic. Nearly as colourful as all these water bombs. Here, catch. <laughs> <laughs> If you don't want to end up spotted in the water bomb fight, you need to master the art of missile catching. And my team's about to learn the secret. My baseball coach taught me about catching with soft hands. As it hurtles into your hand, you move your hand backwards with the water bomb. Just like that. Okay, drill time. Hup, two, three, four. Up, two, three, four. Two, three, four. Good catching, team. If a water bomb hits something hard, all the balloon's energy instantly goes into breaking it. But with Olivia's soft hands trick, the balloon is slowed down as her hands move backwards. During that backwards movement, some of the balloon's energy is absorbed. This reduces the impact and the balloon stays intact. Hey! 
these guys are such good water bomb catchers, I think they're ready for some serious catching practice with eggs. Wait here. I'm practicing for my long distance ocean race next month. Hey, it's only a blow up shark. Hey, Jaws, you interrupted my lap. smells won't interfere with each other. Now let's see how good my sense of smell is. In the most concentrated one, I can just detect a faint whiff of perfume. In the middle one, hmm, I can't smell anything. And as for the last one, no, not even the faintest whiff. We humans actually have a pretty poor sense of smell compared to animals like sharks. It's thought that sharks use as much as 70% of their brains for sensing smell. They can sniff out a single drop of blood even if it's diluted in a million drops of water. Unlike Carrie Ann, who could only just pick up a scent in the jar with the most perfume in it. And that concentration is about a thousand times more than the tiniest whiff a shark can detect. So there's no way a shark could miss the smell of Dad's socks. But I reckon their pong would frighten off even the hungriest predator. I don't know. Some predators are hungry enough to eat almost anything. I think she means me. But I'm choosy. I like my noodles tasty and piping hot, just like Sally does. I know I'm the world's slowest eater because my noodles always go cold before I finish eating them. I know. I'm going to see if I can keep them warmer for longer. I've got two sorts of takeaway cups. One has plucked sides, the other is wrinkly. I wonder if one of them will keep my noodles warmer than the other. Now I'll cup them both tightly in my hands for a few minutes. Time's up, and in go the thermometers. The noodles in the plain coffee cup are 31 degrees Celsius. That's 88 degrees Fahrenheit. What about the insulated cup? Hey! Four whole degrees warmer than the flat-sided cup. When your hands are wrapped around them, the rippled outer layer of insulated cups traps little pockets of air between your hands and the cup. Because heat doesn't travel through air very easily, it stays trapped in the cup. Yum! Finish my noodles and they were still hot. Time to go beat the boys up their game. Yay! I really am on a hot streak today. <laughs> Got a handful of ball bearings here. Wanna have a look? See if you can line them up neatly on the tape. Whoa, careful! They're slippery little suckers. They're like Mexican jumping beans. They just hate staying still. 
<laughs> She'll never get them to line up and stay put. Not like that, anyway. Ashley, what you need is a magnet. Allow me. One ball bearing. Two ball bearings. Three ball bearings. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And check this out. I can even lift them up. As the magnetic field from Billy's magnet causes atoms within the ball bearings to rearrange themselves, they become magnetized. This means that each ball bearing down the chain becomes a magnet itself and attracts the next ball. Billy's magnetic chain can only stay together while the magnet is attached. Pretty nifty, eh? Oh no! Very funny, Ashley. Catch him if you can, guys. Yeah, I don't know what's harder, catching ball bearings or catching eggs. Our team has turned it into a top class missile catching outfit. Now it's time to hit the big time. Egg catching. Now these shells are really fragile. But soft hands still work. Here, see if you can catch this, Michael. Just kidding. Not quite ready for the old fastball yet. To catch a fast moving egg, we're going to need something even gentler than soft hands. And this blanket is going to be perfect. You guys grab the corners. And I'll try my slow pitch first. Perfect catch. Another one. Yep, I think we've got egg catching in the bag. As the egg hits the blanket, the blanket material begins to move backwards with the egg. This gives the egg time to slow down. Just like soft hands, the soft blanket absorbs energy from the egg. So the shell won't shatter, even if the egg's thrown hard. Now it's time to demonstrate my fastball. Oh no! I think we should stick with water bombs. We'll clean up the opposition much more easily. Can't wait to see how that big water bomb event's going to finish up. Me either, but I do know it's time for us to finish up because we've come to the end of another show. See, see you next time. time.